what I want to ask you first is which are the changes that orgs you're seeing in your preview and that they are implementing in the short term because of this you know, forced global pandemic, what do you see sticking for the long haul? Yeah, it's the right question is what stays and what, and what goes back to the way, the way it was. And um, I guess, you know, and if you go back in time to, you know, say uh, the early 2000s uh, when there was SARS in China uh, yeah. and people had to stay home and everything, that was in many ways, uh, many people attribute the, the success of Alibaba uh, in China to, to the fact that, the early success, to the fact that people all of a sudden had to figure out new ways of, of buying and selling and selling goods. Uh, and if you go to the uh, 2008 financial crisis and you know, people were trying to figure out how to kind of get around and, and you know, many people attribute the early success of Uber and Airbnb uh, to that. So you can easily imagine that there are, um, there, look, there are other things in, in all three of those companies that caused their success, but, but uh, it is clear that during times of shock and times of recession, that new business models come out and it's hard to know exactly what those new business models are going to be right now, but there's a good chance that there will be some new business models that, that come out. Right, um, right. You know, a, a, a way to think about uh, what this is doing to the world of business. And this is, at least this is the framework I use is, you know, it will actually uh, homogenize uh, what many people have already been doing in terms of using technology to make them more productive. Uh, so, and, and I'll just give you a few a few examples of that. So, e-signatures, uh, yeah. e e right? You know, uh, e-signatures. Some some companies use it. Some individuals are c comfortable with it. Uh, when you're remote, all of a sudden, uh, it's it's the only game in town. E-banking, more generally. Uh, whereas many people have been going to, you know, bank branches uh, uh, to conduct their their banking, all of a sudden digital banking is becomes the only way to do banking. And and while many of us have already been doing digital banking and rarely go into a a branch, all of a sudden, you know, everyone is now having to learn how to do that. And it that may change that may change the way everyone does banking. Uh, and but for right now, it's harmonizing. Uh, and homogenizing how people bank. And my guess is that'll persist where you'll have more digital banking in the future than you had in the past just, just because of this. Another example is, is uh, telemedicine, um, which as, as you know, there are many, many ventures out there of connecting uh, providers uh, with, with patients that, that need help, both physical and, and mental, emotional help. Uh, and my strong guess is this is this will surge uh, associated with what we're going through right now, and that will actually grow those businesses uh, and as people get used to uh, using those kinds of services. Um, the broader point, I think, is that what this is doing is causing what many people were already doing, but not most, to the point where everyone begins to operate that way. So in many ways, it it uh, equalizes the use of digital technologies, whether it's mm -hmm. teleconferencing, whether it's tele, uh, video conferencing, uh, all of these things that many people use, now everyone is frankly being forced to origin, uh, initially, and then over time will enjoy the benefits of, of those technologies. Interesting perspectives, yeah, especially the Uber and Alibaba ones are very, very emblematic yeah, I mean, and crises, yeah, I mean, you know, forming you know, new ways of thinking about business. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no doubt. And, you know, I, I didn't, somebody had a very uh, good quote a while ago that said, the future is here, it's just not evenly distributed. I think what this does is it evenly distributes uh, product, productivity technology uh, across the entire, uh, uh, across the entire workforce globally. Right. Yeah, and when you are watching these sort of patterns develop, either currently or those that you've seen in the past, I mean, you gave me some good examples of, of companies that were born out of necessity in many ways to solve new, uh, basically new ways to solve old problems. Um, when you are seeing these businesses making 
these um, sort of short-term impulsive moves, like the way they need to work, um, after all this dust settles and you know the crisis, so to speak, is over, do you think that there's going to be a muscle memory where folks, uh, IT and business leaders, just sort of recoil back to their same patterns, or is this sort of now, um, you know, sort of tattooed on us that we have to sure. move forward in this new way? What, how, what's yeah. your perspective you on know, that? As usual, it's never 100% one way or the other. My guess yeah. is. Let's 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 take some. I'll make up some numbers. Thirty to forty percent of uh, of knowledge workers uh, were already using technology to allow them to be as productive remotely as they were in the office. Um, you know, when things go back to normal, will it uh, will it be a hundred percent? No. Will it be thirty to forty percent? No. It'll be somewhere in between there. Uh, call it maybe, you know, split the difference, call it 70% of people. So there will be more use of technology, but still people are going to want to get together. They're going to need to get together. There is there is the spontaneity of, uh, of idea generation that comes when people are in the same place that is going to be hard to replicate. Uh, and I think right. everyone knows that. Uh, and so coming up with uh, processes even now. Uh, I know. I know some companies right now are doing things like every morning having each team uh, connect with each other. And they, first of all, they insist on it being a video connection, not an mm -hmm. audio connection, uh, right. so that everyone can see everybody else. Uh, and that each person kind of lays out what they're trying to get done for the day uh, and where they can get help. Um, so having you know set processes like that for how people use technology to replicate the kind of spontan spontaneous collaboration that was having that was going on when people were together uh, is, I think, going to be important. And it may be some of those things that persist even when we can go back to quote unquote living normally. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's funny you bring that up. We are obviously a software engineering driven company with yeah. deep ad agile practices. Um, the, the way you describe the, the daily, you know, sort of meeting is exactly what we've deployed across our company. Um, think of them as daily standups that are right. basically designed exactly like an engineering, engineering team would do, but uh, to help our current, you know, rank and file employees that are non-engineering basically get an assessment, understand what's up, um, get their directive and move forward. Um, right. And it just has to be done at a, you know, you need the human touch where, and what that means is your manager may not be able to physically touch you, but you see their eyes. We do use cameras and um, just so we can be as close to each other as we can uh, in these moments. So yeah, we, we've deployed that tactic as well. Yep. Well, let's move into uh, another area. Let's go deeper down sort of the sp specifics of IT and again, yep. this is going to tap into your, you know, great history here, but we want to get a sense of what modern IT will look like, at least from sure. your eyes. 